Welcome to Spiritual Dessert Truths, episode 135 for Russell Brand and other people. Today's episode is the continuation of yesterday. It's about Ubuntu, a new system of contributionism, a new way of looking at money and living. Um, it seems that we have been enslaved, tricked, fooled, <laughs> no matter how smart you are. The system leaves just enough room so that you have the basic needs so you don't complain or you just maintain those and you keep working in the treadmill going around circles to maintain what you think you must so here we go a new world without money Ubuntu a contribution system so pretty much when it started back in the day with colonial times people just contributed what they could what they wanted to what they felt that they would like to contribute light <laughs> for the system for the whole and everybody put in what they could without any money at all there was always all the things that they needed roads food water everything that they needed was available to them it can be this way again let each citizen contribute their natural talents and their acquired skills to the greater benefit of all in the community to convey the message of a whole new philosophy about a world without money is a complex task we went over this yesterday because some people immediately, within seconds, think, nah, it's crazy. Nah, it can't be for me. Oh, it's just too much of a struggle. It'll be a fight. And they'll come up with a fight for accumulated knowledge, using reason and logic to argue that it's not possible for humanity to live without money. <laughs> but they were always living without money. Everything lives without money. All animals, all life, all life on the planet live without money. It doesn't require money, but unfortunately, we've been brainwashed. Let me remind you that in science and the fields of consciousness, change is the only constant. Everything is possible. What I urge you to do is to clear your mind completely of any preconceived ideas and acquired knowledge and keep this infinitely powerful mind of yours absolutely open to new information. Even if the information may sound unreasonable or unrealistic or simply crazy, keep your mind open and let the information wash over you without trying to analyze it. Having an open mind is like being pregnant. You can't be half pregnant. You have to either have an open mind or you don't. You can't be half pregnant. <laughs> In areas of research and true learning, this is a very important part of the growth and realization. We have to let go of the ego and all the other hurdles that will prevent us from acquiring new knowledge. This fellow was saying that he had to learn this the hard way just like millions of other people, <laughs> often allowing the ego to reason away some of the most important findings of research and a path to enlightenment. And it's true, don't we? We just use reason to kind of block things for as long as we can. And then we realize this is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's not even worth living this way. This is a not important point. Oh, this is a very important point that I need to stress. A move towards a world without money is a giant step towards higher consciousness and a highway of enlightenment. Ubuntu, contributionism, is a system for a new world of evolved and conscious beings that realize the importance of unity and equality. Because we're a deeply divided species on every possible level, there is no unity and equality present on our planet. We need to relearn the basic principles of unity and equality, which will be difficult for many based on either gluttony or greed that has been taking a firm hold of the world and disguised in many cloaks of glitter. <laughs> it has taken more than six years to be brave enough to share this information with others. This fellow's been writing for a while because it's very easy for others to shoot it down without a complete and firm understanding of the detailed workings of a moneyless society. I face the angry onslaught of many in an attempt trying to protect what they call everything I've ever worked for in my life. I'm sure you can see. I guess we're continuing. As we progress with this introduction, you'll see how Ubuntu Contribution System provides everything to everyone at all times. Once again, I remind you this is not just a crazy utopian dream, but rather the natural order of things that we've been denied. There is no need to accumulate a hoard of stuff and no need to plan for old age. Under the current system, yeah, it seems like you'd have to pack things away. 
<laughs> like a squirrel. And still your social security isn't going to do anything for you. A system where it's already in trust that it will be there for you not to worry would be great. Such notions and patterns of behavior from before packing it away and hoarding are clear symptoms of an enslaved society, ignorant of their slave species status. On this path, I had to analyze every aspect of society, how it was functioned in the past and how it works today. I had to figure out how the complex human puzzle will function without money in the future, how each and every area of our lives will be affected for the better and how we will adapt to it. What you'll find, just like I did, is that it's a very beautiful journey of discovery when you start to unravel the complex structures of global economics that are understood by very few and replace them by the simplest and effective ways that I've called the natural order of things. Do not need to remind you that there's a natural order of things in the universe. We observe the order as we gaze into the night sky and marvel at the size and beauty of distant galaxies and nebula. The universe around us is spectacular in its beauty, infinite and abundance of divine creation. And it all functions without money. The global movements like Occupy Wall Street have brought to our attention that 99% of the people are waking up to the gross inequality among the people of our planet and the massive abuse that we've endured under those who control the supply of money. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of the United States of America, made the following statement before 1780. He said, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent that their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom property belongs. This day has come. It is now very clear that the global bankers and those who control the supply and flow of money are in control of our planet and have been for a long time. How and why this happened is a fascinating tale of unimaginable exposure that takes us back thousands of years to the Sumerian civilization and the creation of the first money. We were talking about it yesterday, clay tablets. Money did not evolve as a beneficial tool for humans. On some kind of natural evolutionary path that brought us here, it is the disinformation that we've been force fed by the government sponsored education system set up to keep us dumbed down. The reality is far more sinister and therefore more unbelievable to many. Money was maliciously introduced thousands of years ago as a tool of enslavement by the royal political bloodline of high priests and kings that still rule the world today and still control the supply of money. This group of faceless controllers belong to highly secret societies known as the Illuminati and other nice names. They're real. They control pretty much everything on the planet for now. On the 27th of April, 1961, United States President JFK delivered a speech which referred to the secret dealings of the societies and corporations which included the Federal Reserve System and their banking subsidies. This is what he had to say. The very word secrecy is repugnant in the free and open society. And we, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Its proceedings are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned. No rumors printed. No secret is revealed. Well, they own all of the newspapers, <laughs> all of the media, <laughs> all the mainstream. So you're not going to get any truth. You're just going to get what they would like you to know or think. Here's what we would like you to think. Many people are of the opinion that this was in inevitably the speech that got Kennedy assassinated. In essence, he was blowing the whistle on the secretive group of bankers and controllers of humanity when he realized he was not really in charge of the path to prosperity of the American people, but that this small group of powerful individuals 
were in absolute control. The producers of the documentary Zeitgeist made it clear that to keep people enslaved physically, you have to house them, feed them, and clothe them. Though the introduction of money as a tool of enslavement, people need to work for money, but in the process, they have to feed, clothe, and house themselves. What a brilliant and simple twist in the clever enslavement of humanity with money. Secret societies of a chosen few have been playing games with humanity forever. Many ancient texts, including the Bible, are full of this information, but we have been too arrogant and ignorant to recognize it. The Tower of Babel incident in the Bible is just one of the examples of the attempt to keep humanity divided and at war with each other. It was successful. The sooner we come to terms with this historic fact, the easier it will be for us to discard money and revert back to the natural order of things and enjoy the abundance of all things that the universe and our planet provide. The moneyless Ubuntu style system that I am referring to, which is an adaptation of an ancient African custom, is not based on barter or trade. This is often the mistake that many have made in the past. This is also the reason why all previous socioeconomic policies have failed. Barter and trading is just another form of money, and he who has more to trade will eventually want to rule the roost. I found this is often those who are more educated and have risen to the high levels of respect through their higher education. Discard this information out of hand. They feel that because of their level of education, it's impossible to have kept such information hidden from them and that they're too smart for anyone to pull the wool over their eyes. If you're paying a mortgage, you got the wool over your eyes. These highly trained and educated individuals have become the most vicious protectors of their slave masters, the bankers and the governments that have cunningly conned them into the false sense of superiority, believing that they're defending their freedoms and privileges in a free society. A society where those who are smarter will succeed. Think about it though. As the smartest, as the scientist, as the brilliant, are you ruling? Did Einstein rule? No, we don't even have desire to rule. <laughs> it's just not, not in the nature of a very intelligent being. The problem with all of that though is being enslaved and not recognizing it. At this stage, it's also important to remind you there are none more enslaved than those who believe they are free. And this, my fellow humans, is the predominant case in the world today. Democracy is another sugar-coated poison pill we've been choking on for too long. Democracy has been sold to us as the intimate rights of individuals and that the choice of the majority has to be implemented. But it's not. Once you really think about this, you'll realize that democracy is nothing else but a bullying tactic. The democratic process can be manipulated and has very successfully been manipulated by those who control money. It has been said that USA presidents are not elected, but rather selected by the faceless money makers. <laughs> that is another way I, I read in Revolution. It's the one who have the most money. You just you might as well just give it to the one who has the most money. There's constant talk of debt and injecting more money into the economy and every country in the world owes some other country money. The banks keep getting bailed out. To be continued. Love you. Tomorrow, more. <laughs>